Okay, can we just talk about this for a few minutes? Because basically, I'm going to be lighting a fire. I really am. Because there's going to be a debate on this. And not everybody's going to agree with my viewpoint on this. But we are going to be talking about classic band shirts. Whether it's t-shirts, hoodies, it doesn't matter. We're going to be talking about it. And I'm going to give you my opinion on them coming up next. Welcome to Jonathan Mertz, just talking about whatever. Hi, I'm your host, Jonathan Mertz. Make sure you're subscribing to this podcast and tell your friends about it. I'll really appreciate it. All right, so be prepared because not everybody's going to agree with what I have to say about today's topic and what I'm talking about, which is classic band shirts. And honestly, I don't know why people get so upset about younger people wearing these iconic icons, okay? And these band shirts. I really don't. But we're going to dive deep into this. But we need to start back at the beginning when the very first concert t shirt was ever produced. The very first ones appeared back in the 1950s and was offered by an Elvis Presley fan club. Yeah, so the king of rock and roll is what started these t shirts. But the idea for shirts at concerts really didn't take off until a decade later. It was actually more around 1968 when Bill Graham introduced t-shirts for the Grateful Dead and Jefferson Airplane. And those things just started sailing. And from there on, the band swag was created. And everybody had to get in on it. If you can get a vintage first edition t-shirt of some of these acts that is in mint condition they go for thousands and thousands of dollars you know you're talking about led zeppelin and the rolling stones you know getting in one of the first edition shirts for some of their original tours is outrageous in price so you've got to think about it from the 1950s where it first started and then didn't really take off until the 1960s we had this gap of where, you know, swag wasn't really becoming a thing. And then, hey, the marketing guy's like, hey, this, this is really neat. We need to really hop on the bandwagon. Now you see concert shirts for every type of concert, no matter where you go. You can go to a small venue and the band playing may even have their own t-shirt for sale. But why is there so much controversy around wearing band shirts? And not like band shirts of artists today, the older artists. When I was growing up, the conflict was, you know, in the 1980s and 1990s, if you were wearing anything from the 70s or 60s, like a Beatles shirt, or even Leonard Skinner and Bob Seger, it seemed like the older generation would like, well, you don't know who them is. I bet you can't even name a song that they sing. Or... In some cases, like, you better not say, you know, Sweet Home Alabama. You know, in case you're wearing a Leonard Skinner shirt or, or Freebird. You better not say those. You better give me something else cause to prove you listen to that music because you ought not be wearing that shirt right now. And, of course, in the 90s, as we kind of got into that spectrum, you know, you started wearing Guns N' Roses from the 80s and things like that. And everybody's like, you don't know anything about that, man. Or to kiss, you know. You don't know anything about them either. But, you know, it, it, you had to prove yourself that you knew the band that you were wearing. Now, which is much harder than it is today, because today you can just Google it and you can learn it and learn it. So here is my conflict with this. First, old people just need to stay out of people's business. You know, I'm 42, so te technically to a lot of youth, I'm old. But even though I'm not, I'm really not in retrospect, I'm not that old. And, and some of these are like, dude, you're, you're totally old. Yeah, wait till you get here. You'll be changing your mind. I had to change my mind too. But looking at it from a standpoint, just stay out of the people's business. It doesn't matter what shirt they're wearing. Because here's the thing. Even though it may have these wonderful, iconic bands that contributed to music so immensely, it doesn't have anything to do with them wearing that shirt. Other than the band existed, that's why it's on that shirt. But the cool thing about this, and this is where 
people don't ever consider this. It's a fashion statement. It is art. It really is. Anytime you put any graphic or design a piece of clothing, it's actually considered art. That's why we have designer clothes wear. That's why we have all of these different people designing these all fashion trends. Because it's a way of expression and it's a way to resemble and promote your art. So the lyrics of any song, the band themselves, the music they made does not mean anything in this regard. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't help educate your youth. Now, if they're going to be wearing that Leonard Skinner shirt, they're going to need to know some things about Leonard Skinner. And my son is a perfect example of this because he has a bunch of classic shirts. Now, he has everything, you know, from Def Leppard to Nirvana to Biggie, Tupac. I mean, he's got a whole wide of classic artists, you know, whether it's rock or, or hip hop. He's got it. He's got some, I think he may even have a couple ones in Soul. I think I'm, I can't remember if we got any Marvin Gaye shirt or not. But the thing I told him about, I said, to, to help avoid conflict in this, I said, find at least four songs that that band has sung. Now, if they're one hit wonder, that's, that's another thing. But if, if, if it is like ACDC, which he has a shirt, he can name you four of their songs right off the bat. Led Zeppelin can do four of their songs. And I told him to pick songs that weren't in their really top portion. So he goes on down, you know, down the list. He's not doing Stairway to Heaven right away. He's doing Dire Maker and, and, and Cashmere, you know, things that are, you know, that people don't always think of right right away. You know, obviously Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, boom, first thing everybody thinks of. You know, and it is so, so interesting to see people's faces when he can spit that out. It is hilarious. And sometimes he forgets because, you know, he's not always into every piece of music, although he has been listening to it and he want more. He listens to it. He's like, whoa, these bands were pretty iconic and I can understand why now people like them so much. And it's why I fell in love with the Beatles when I was younger and had Beatles shirts and Beatles uh, attire, you know, that's why I loved all of, of the seventies music. You know, from Grand Funk Railroad to, to obviously Leonard Skinner and Bachman Turner Overdrive and Bob Seger. And then I went to work for an oldie station later. So, <laughs> and I, and it was so funny because I could tell you about everything about them songs because that was what my interest was in. But let me tell you, not everybody wearing these shirts are going to be interested in the band that they're wearing. I know that makes make you go cringe right now. Hey, man, that's like blasphemy. How, how in the heck are you not going to know who ACDC is? I mean, Angus Young and, and Brian Johnson and, and all them guys, man. I mean, they, they're going to be appalled. You're, you're making it like it's a religion, and it's really not. It's just a fashion statement. And it really is. And, and the cool thing is some of the most iconic things and iconic symbols came from just the graphic design of some of these tours and some of the band logos. Everybody can pick out the Rolling Stones logo. Super, super easy. Why do you think that is? Because they made it simple. They made it vibrant. And funny all at the same time. Now think about that. Isn't that something? That's marketing at its, at its best. And you know who also does marketing very well? Food companies and restaurants. How many kids do you see right now walking around with t-shirts that may have Snickers on it or Reese's or, or anything like that? Or even McDonald's in some cases. I bet you right now could sing what's on a Big Mac. 
You could even hum the McDonald's tune. Why do you think that is? Well, one, they're a multi-million dollar company and they invested it in social psychology. Meaning, what makes people tick? What makes people think? What makes people go after things that they really, really enjoy and like? And that's exactly what social media is doing to an extreme. But the fads go so fast on social media because people get it so much that they get tired of it. But it's interesting to see some of these iconic fashions come and circle back around again. You know, there was a time where the 70s fashion was in with the bell bottoms. And now the 80s fashions are in. And now let's hear the 90s fashions are back in. So why get upset when someone doesn't see it from your viewpoint? And why does it bother you so much? That's what I'm, I'm focused on. Like at one point I was right there. I'm like, man, they're wearing that shirt. I bet they don't know nothing about that shirt. And I can't believe, you know, then I was like, why, why, why am I thinking this way? That's a really cool shirt. I mean, whether they, they didn't know who they was or not. Now, obviously. Here's the thing, and this is the warning that I'll give some people. There are some bands out there with some really, 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 really cool shirt designs. But their music is hate-driven and really mentally harmful in a way that it, way it's written. Not that it causes mental harm or anything like that. It's just like it talks about doing mental harm to people, doing, you know, torture to people and things like that. And you may even not know or be aware what the viewpoints are behind this, these bands or icons, and you'll be wearing their shirt. And the next thing you know, people are getting in on you, calling you a racist because that band is a white supremacist band, which there are a lot of punk bands that used to fit in that category. Because a lot of the skinheads followed that punk scene in its early stages very, very closely. And a lot of people didn't realize that. You know, the punk came from, came from England. That's where the punk music came from. A lot of people don't realize that that's where the majority of the punk rave and, and it all got started. Now, whether it actually originated from there and started there, or if it just, you know, was bigger there and kind of flooded over into other areas... I'm not sure on that, but I know the biggest portion of punk influence came from England. And it has big ties with, with white supremacy. Now, does it mean if you like punk music, you're a racist? Heck no, because the music evolves, people evolve. And music is one thing that can jump across cultural lines. It really can. It can go one way and it can go the other. I love to see today when you are watching these country music videos or watching these country music artists come up and you see so much diversity, whether it's Hispanic and Asian or, or even African American groups coming on that in a white, predominantly white, you know, genre, you know, cause you're used to seeing everybody emulate, you know, African American originated music, whether it was rock and roll, the blues, you know, any of that, that, you know, R and B and soul, hip hop. You know, you you see how that kind of you know people want to get into it. But why do they want to get into it? It's not because it's a black music, white music. It's because it's good music to them. It's good music to them. It's music that hits their soul, which is why soul music is so powerful because it is designed to latch on with emotion. Gets down in that soul. But yet people have trouble with anybody trying something that they deem is should be only for one thing. And in my opinion, that's the wrong way to look at things. But we got to give credit where credit is due. Don't get me wrong. But that's a whole other topic in itself. Back to the shirts. So what is your opinion on this? Should the youth be wearing these classic shirts and not know anything about the artist? Or what they've ever done or any songs 
In my opinion, yeah. Let them rock and roll with it, so to speak, right? Let them move on. Let them show this fine artwork out there. Now, obviously, if there are things as a parent or guardian that you have some trouble with, explain to them why. Don't yell at them. Get that shirt off, blah, 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 blah. If it's something that you consciously do not agree with, approach them and let them know. Say, hey, you know, I want to talk to you about this shirt if you don't mind. Hey, can we, can I tell you something about that shirt? You know, and be it in a calm manner. People forget that a gentle hand is easier to grab a hold of than a harsh one that is crushing you. Okay? Grab them, lead them. Sometimes you find out with your dogs, you just don't yank your dog and come on. If you just pull in that right smooth manner, they'll respond to you a lot easier than just yanking them and fighting them. Because when they feel that yank, they want to fight back in some cases. In other cases, they want to ball up and then they're laying on the ground. Now you got to drag them. Gentle. And it doesn't mean you'll always be gentle. But it's got to be your first approach. So, in retrospect, let them wear it. Have fun with it. Hey, nobody says you can't make fun of them for not knowing the songs. They're your kids, after all. Obviously, don't bully them. You know, poke fun. I don't, you know, josh around a little bit. Hey, it's all in fun and, good, fun and games. But, really, what's really important? Anyways, that's all I have to say today. Hey, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to this podcast. Leave a review if you don't mind. Thank you all so much. Follow me on Twitter at Jonathan Mertz as well as on Instagram at Jonathan Mertz. And uh, subscribe to my TikTok page. It's again at Jonathan Mertz. So thank you all and uh, talk to you soon.